If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this episode of Mind Pump, for the first 44 minutes, we do our introductory conversation. Bring the heat. We talk about uh, the smoldering heat. In Are you a hot or cold person? Studio. It's yeah, swampy in here. We mention our good friend, Brendan Iambedejo. I call him the hey, modern said it right. uh, renaissance man. What's his name, Adam? Last name? Brendan Iambedejo. Oh, he did it. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. We talk about Trump's terrible tariffs and shitty economics. Trump, you moron. Thanks a lot, buddy. We talk about Enzo's vlog. You got to go check out his page. They're actually pretty funny. And his love of the skinny dipped almonds. They are fucking delicious. You can't blame the kid. And we're also sponsored by We are sponsored by Skinny mm. Dipped. If you go to skinnydipped.com, enter the code MINDPUMP, you get 20% off. We give a little six-week challenge update. Uh, Justin's kicking ass. Adam's kicking ass. They're right at my heels. I'm in the mm. lead here. <laughs> <laughs> You're always wearing heels, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking, we talk about cooking healthy, uh, and we mentioned uh, how to use Organifi products Coming out of a carnivore type diet, we love Organifi products. They are organic, uh, non artificially sweetened supplements. They have protein powders, they have a green juice, they have a gold juice for the evening, and they have a red juice for pre workout. If you go to organifi.com forward slash mind pump and enter the code mind pump, you'll get 20% off all of their products. Then we get into the questions. The first question was as per this challenge of getting shredded, what is a better way to get started? What do you do first? Add cardio, cut your calories, or add more strength training, or all of the above? Do you Find out. All of the above. Believe it or not, there's a right answer to this. There's a better way to do things. The next question was, what are the pros and cons of working out alone versus working out with a workout partner? We actually got into a strange debate on this one. <laughs> Not sure why we debated this. It one. was kind of strange. It got heated. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it was a yeah. good debate. I actually sided with Adam on yeah, that one. Yeah, of course you do. Yeah. He's your boy. Yeah, yeah. Third question is, uh, how do I grow a massive butt? Justin lays down some knowledge on this some one. Some ass knowledge. These cheeks came in hot. He's got enough glutes for three people. Uh, we do have a butt guide, believe it or not. There's a guide on teaching you how to get your butt to finally respond, and it costs nothing. It's free. Go to mindpumpfree.com and get that. And the final question, this person's siblings are severely overweight, and they are contemplating gastric bypass surgery. What is our advice uh, for these people who are in this difficult situation? I also want to mention that there are Four days left for the 50% off MAPS Anabolic sale. How many days, Justin? Holy four. Four? How about you, Adam? How many four, days left do we have? Four. <laughs> There's only four <laughs> days left. MAPS Anabolic right now you can get for under $60. That's it. That's total. And you get full access to our uh, flagship program. It's the one to start it all. It's great for building muscle, great for building strength, excellent for boosting your metabolism. Now, we also have bundles. Now, this is where we combine multiple math programs. So if you're like really serious and you want everything set up for you for six months or for a year, let's say you want a year set up for you. I do. You should do the super bundle. That's where we combine a bunch of math programs. We'll put them in order for you and we discount them like 30% off. You can find all of our bundles and the 50% off MAPS Anabolic that ends in four days, all of it at mindpumpmedia.com. Where were we just at recently? And, or guest that we were talking to that said Sal has a great radio voice. Do you, who was oh, it? Oh, I think, you it was, know. It was somebody who, who was it accounts. it Christina Rice? No, no, no it was you, somebody you who accounts. pound this. What was her name Yes, because she's actually on the radio, so she knows yeah. these things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? She said that, and I was like, oh, no, He's got tech. like the, yay, the radio voice. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe the, that's what she's, I think that's what she's <laughs> talking about. <laughs> that's not what I yeah. sound like. <laughs> no, but I mean, like you'd fit in. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> when I first heard you, <laughs> yeah. your voice, I'm like, this guy sounds like a, a stoner, like a stoner yeah, surfer. Definitely. But you're you're not. I know. Yeah, and the irony in that he wasn't even really smoking much when we first started. No, like, no. Not at all. It's no. hilarious. Yeah. And then Adam sounds like uh <laughs> Ama- amazing. No, you sound like Just say it. You so, sound like a so hard for you, like a forty-eight-year-old <laughs> woman that works at Walmart that's been smoking yeah, for twenty like years, forever, <laughs> chain smoking her way to the end. You know, give me your son. Yeah. Like whoa, like your name's Marge. Everybody needs a Marge. Yeah. Calm yeah. down. 
Hey, I tell you what, man, I really appreciate you guys finally adjusting the temperature for people like me from the Mediterranean. Oh God. Oh yeah. It's nice and I'm and, glad you're happy. It's nice and warm and, and moist in this fucking It's studio. annoying, dude. We have to fix I th- it puts me to sleep. Swampy. About thirty minutes into this podcast, man, when it's warm in here, I get all. Oh. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. it's pretty funny. Just watch. No, it. It's not funny. It's annoying as <laughs> fuck, dude. I do yeah. not like to be hot. Like I'm so. That was like the uh, Katrina shopping for. Have the- you gotten better though since you've been using the 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 infrared sauna and all that? Has your heat tolerance gotten better? Oh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really. Oh, I try. Mine hasn't. I try to avoid that as much as possible. Like I have AC everywhere I go, so I try and keep it nice and cool. I wonder what that says about. A person, you know what I mean? Like if you have a like you're irritable when you get hot. Yeah, something like if if you have a intolerance to heat or mm. an intolerance to cold. Well, you, let if me, that means different you things. Know, the, why I get irritated uh, is because it it can be solved. Like I'm if we're in fucking if we're down in if we're down in Mexico <laughs> technology for well, this. No, exactly. If we're down in Mexico, we're out on the beach and it's one ten. I'm not complaining. When I'm it's supposed on, I'm, to be hot. Yeah, exactly. I'm I'm yeah. sucking up the rays, man, and getting in the water, having a great you know time. The water's right there. Yeah, enjoying the heat. Yeah. But when so I walk okay, into my in. fucking studio and it's a hundred degrees inside of it, that annoys me. Yeah, yeah. When I walk into my house and it's a hundred degrees, that annoys me because yeah. the technology is there to to keep that from happening. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that's what pisses me off i'm not amen, like amen brother like, i'm not like a, i don't yeah. get upset about just getting hot like somebody if froze it over huh is that what happened no sure? did, did we figure <laughs> no. out what happened it was working yesterday somebody. well because of thought out you know that's not how that's it's not how that's not how that works referring something once those yeah. things freeze up they're fucked until I'll, you get fixed again i'll be honest i don't even know how an ac works <laughs> it's just it's just a big block of ice with a fan on it right blowing the, the, the cold yeah you, you guys remember those uh what are they called swamp coolers yeah, or we had a swamp cooler. did you really yeah yeah we had installed one with my dad yeah so that's like the cheap man's or poor man's yeah totally that's exactly what it was i mean you just put it in the bottom of your window and it's like that yeah. In the house all day. All day. <laughs> well, so I, so my grandmother and my grandparents, so my family in Sicily from my dad's side, they're not well off. That's just to put it nicely, right? They don't, they don't have much money. And Sicily gets hot. And when I mean it's like humid, hot. And my, my dad's family lives in Bagaria, which is not a beach town. So it's a little bit more inland. I mean, you could drive 40 minutes and get to the beach, but you're in this concrete jungle. It's hot as shit. The houses are made out of concrete and then my grandparents didn't have ac mm. so when we would go there in the summer it was like you ever sleep like naked welter fest you sleep naked with fans on you doesn't matter within 30 minutes the area of the bed that you're on is soaked uh, oh, that sounds horrible and so what you end up doing to find relief is you move to a different part of the bed and then the bar- part of the bed that you sweat on starts to cool off, and then you just go back to it and get the cool wetness. <laughs> I'd sleep in the tub at that point. Oh, you know I mean? it was it was. I know my mom hates me talking about like when we were when we were uh, had less stuff, right? But we <laughs> politically correct. <laughs> yeah, I'm, try- I'm trying to make you it- didn't have less stuff. You had a horse. <laughs> yeah, we were broke. Yeah, yeah. You had a, you had a dune we buggy. full equestrian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we we used to fucking take. Uh, co- cold rags, yeah. and you'd put cold rags on your head and on your ankles. So that's like that oh, was yeah. that was to stay cool in the house because where we lived, like it would be like 110 degrees, dude, and yeah. we did not run the AC. It was dry out there though, right? Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, have AC, but, but I don't give a, I don't give a shit what if it's dry, wet, humid, doesn't matter if it's 110 degrees in your house, like it's uh, hot inside the house. Yeah, <laughs> dude, terrible. that's that is <laughs> too hot. It's, yeah, like terrible. laying on a Bullshit. bed is just awful. Like the sheets are yeah, hot, yeah. you know. What I'm like, so see, I don't like cold. Yeah. I can't. Although oh, although, these days, although these days, although these days. Cold doesn't bother me as much, and yeah. I've, I've realized what it is. I think it's when I, when I push my food intake a little bit, when I'm feeling good, and I get my metabolism to ramp up. I definitely run hotter. <laughs> when I eat, just listen to my body. My body tends to settle at, at lower calories. Then I notice I have more of a, a yeah. like a cold intolerance. You know what I'm saying? Well, I acclimate a little bit easier to cold. Like, and yeah, you're a polar bear. Let's except, be honest. Except, dude, when I went to Chicago, that was. I mean, I I had no idea what cold was. You know, like we all say that until you go experience the Arctic fucking uh, d- like winds that just blow th- right through your skin to your bone and chill you. But 
Like you get used to that too, though. So I felt like I could handle that any day of the week over like humidity and really? hot and oh yeah. You'd rather have freezing cold than humidity. I, I would 100%. too. Hundred percent too. You guys are not even in, not both even. insane. No, no. So no, you'd rather no. live. I'd rather in, be freezing. Alaska. You'd rather live in Buffalo, New York. Dude, it's got to be something in, back in the heritage thing, the, the the Viking, you know, like Scottish heritage. That kind of you thing. You just right? think you're a badass. If you <laughs> <laughs> So you would rather live in, in like the movie Braveheart. You'd rather live in like Buffalo, New York versus like Hawaii. Well, that's a stupid example. No, that's not even that's a, a stu- good comparison, I'm talking about the, dude. Yeah, I'm talking on, about the weather. No, the weather. no, yeah, then you just say the weather. The I would weather. rather live somewhere where the weather is like X versus, like, you can't compare no, 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 Buffalo, New York to fucking Hawaii. A- <laughs> <laughs> fucking <laughs> tropical white yeah, sand. Yeah, I'm going to change my answer, sir. 85 degree bath water. Well, that's water. what I mean. So, like, if San Jose <laughs> could have weather like Buffalo or weather like Hawaii, you po- you would choose Buffalo. No, I would say more like... St. Louis or, or like a Florida, like that. That weather sucks. Like I can't even, dude. Really? Like, yeah. Like the, just I can't the hot, even. humid. I can't even. No, I think, you know. You know what it is? It's because of too. The environment makes a difference. Like if I don't have, if I'm not right next to water, and it's that hot, like I just there's some kind of panic. That it's happens. very simple for me. <laughs> one of them is easily controlled. The other one is not. Like yeah. I have full control of the cold thing. If it's freezing, like yeah, you can always bucks, layer up. I could fucking Eskimo up, dude. Yeah. I could wrap my head with a scarf and four what a layers. Pain in the ass. Whatever. It's better than it being in a situation where you can't do anything about dude, it. You can only take off so much clothes. Your feet. You fuck. walk like inch by inch. Just, no, fuck that. No, it's thanks. Like, it's like you're at home. You're watching a movie. It's freezing as fuck out outside you're like ooh, i want some ice cream i gotta go take nobody 15 cra- to nobody minutes. craves ice cream when it's 30 below Fine, bro. whatever <laughs> i want to get something you're gonna yeah. have to take like 20 to no 30 minutes cream. to wrap your shit up go outside get when it's hot you just don't like, act like you spend that put much on time a tank top and some underwear no way it takes that long it's just you put all those clothes on you know what's worse is you can't do anything about it when it's super hot yeah. You can't. Can, you can just put on a wife beater and your fucking speedo. Again, can't do it. But it's still 110. It's still. You can be in a wife beater and, and, and booty shorts and still sweat your ass off. Oh, I love it. Right. Oh, I love but it. But what's cool about it in freezing it weather is so you can nice. you can put enough clothes on to where you can be warm. It's also an excuse to be honest with you. It's an excuse for me to wear like a wife beater all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like that's, my. That's the real answer. Yeah, here. because I have the kind of body. Yeah. You know, you ever find that article, like there's a certain kind of article of clothing that like makes form fits you. That looks your best yeah. for your body, right? right? So like a wife beater for Bro, me. Bro, I think every 16-year-old boy figured that out about wife beaters. Yeah. No. I did no, no, too. No. Listen, yeah. if you have, yeah, it works on you too. If you have, let me put it this way. If you have skinny arms, a big chest, and a big back, you're not going to look good in a wife beater because it covers up mm. the big areas. Okay, that's I'm kind of narrow. My chest isn't that big. I got nice delts and arms. Wife beater. Yeah. It's like the, it's like a it's like a what you call it like okay. Photoshop. Okay, I can get I can get on, I can get on board with that. I can get you know on board. Yeah, because guys with skinny arms are terrible tank tops. <laughs> terrible. Yeah, you can't. like those guys look good in sweaters. Yeah, yeah. you know what you know I mean. I don't a look good in a sweater. I don't look a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> remember those remember those old school workout short uh, shirts that dudes with with the huge collar uh, cut yeah. out. Yeah, and like it just like it kind of draped. It, it looks like it a nineteen eighty cleavage. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I, mean, I had like, I had a bunch of fucking YouTube trolls pumpkin my arms. Like really? Oh my god, bro! What? See, I have small arms, dude. Bro, uh, <laughs> really? Like fuck! I know they're I know they're not at their oh best god. right so now. Like, I, I know I'm not fucking killing it. So I know you guys are you guys are literally just trying to. Be mean. I know you guys are super religious and I'm starting to believe in certain things. This is the serendipitous part of all of this, okay? Oh, here we go. No way in hell guys like Adam and I would have survived on YouTube in our early 20s. No way. <laughs> no, with that kind of shit, you, we would have fired back, got pissed off, you fucking done It's crazy not even shit. constructive. It's it, terrible. It's just fucking asshole shit. And, but, and they hit you where it hurts. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> That's what they, they know how to do that. Yeah, they'll, they'll like pick They're the like, part ooh. of my body that I was insecure about maybe 10, 15 years yeah. ago. You know, that would have bothered me. And then they do it and I it's laugh. Like I'm calves, like, you know, it's <laughs> like you know, your shoulders <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah, I did a chest yeah. video. And look, my chest has like always your been. nipples in, are weird. Ah! My chest has always been an area that I've, that I've focused on. And if you saw where I started, you'd think I was a genius by how far I've come. Okay, so people look and be like, oh, it's not that big. It's a fucking long way. But, but, you know, that's an area that I've always, it's always been insecure about when I was a kid. And I did a chest training video on YouTube. <laughs> so <laughs> the, there's like four comments are like, you should have a guy with a big chest teach you this video. Or why is he, I'm not going to listen to him. Well, it's the just, irony like, of that, you, the irony of that is that that's, that is what, uh, that's the credentials that people want. Like, how funny is that? Yeah. Like, I want to do. People are that stupid. I'd rather have a dude that's juiced up. 
and and fucking full of water mm. that has massive bubbly biceps telling me how to train my biceps than he some, did it than somebody that's actually educated and have been teaching others for fucking years. It's like, true. Like that is so crazy to me. It's true. Like I don't I, like. Would you rather have <clears throat> Usain Bolt coach you on how to sprint, or would you rather have his coach coach you on how to sprint? See right. what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Yeah. Because he looks faster. The, to be honest with you, some many times, not always, okay, but many times... Many times the, the coaches look terrible. They do, but, oh, but... Some of the best coaches look terrible. But not only that, but some many times the best people in a given sport are the worst people to teach you anything. Oh, I see what you're saying. You know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it comes yeah. so naturally to them, and they just know how to work hard, and they know how to work with their... You know, that's why it's, zero, zero, that's why it's rare that we see pro athletes yeah. m- turn into great coaches. That's I mean, right. there, there, there's an anomaly. It's like that, that yeah. does happen. Or great announcers. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they're so dumb. Actually, funny you there's say that. There's a few of them that are awesome. There's a lot of talk so. right now about Tony Romo, right, and, and them letting him do more or that at more because uh, he took he just took over um, Gruden's job because Gruden now is coaching the Raiders. Oh yeah, and that's they were awesome. they were. Uh, they were talking about like you know uh, there's a lot of people that hate on Tony Romo the way he announces I'm a Cowboys fan so I'm like whatever I've never been a Tony Romo fan though uh, but I, I what I love about Tony Romo and the way that Gruden which there's some some critics out there say he, they talk too much just not I actually love listening to them because they won't just like like regular announcers that are just a regular like a um, uh, what's his name that's famous that's been around forever. Uh, why can't I think of his name? Like Al Davis or some or not? Al, I mean uh, Al Michaels. <laughs> Al Davis. Like, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, a Raider. I was thinking Raiders, right? Yeah. So yeah. Al Michaels, like you know, he'll he'll tell you what just happened, right? Where. Tony Romo or Gruden will read the... Oh, they'll will, predict it? Yeah. Oh, that's fun. They'll yeah. like, oh, oh, look, he just audible to the yeah. left. Watch watch the wide out to the right right, right. now. Look for a post route. You yeah. know, and you're like, that's cool. So for a guy like you me... see who, what defensive front is there, and so they're going to break down. Where you know what? Right. I love, I yeah. love the game enough. That's smart. That's yeah, smart I because enjoy. I think the more you educate your audience, the more yeah. they start to appreciate... Because I know this. Look, I, I don't watch football or baseball or basketball that much, but I know mixed martial arts and I know jujitsu. Oh yeah. And when I hear like Joe Rogan, right, tell say, you about, yeah. yeah. And what happens? He's is, what got me into, uh, you know, mixed martial arts. Exactly, because then the audience starts to kind of understand a little bit about what's going on. Well, and you they start to a better appre- fans. You appreciate like the ground game. Yeah. Right. Yep. Like before, everybody get all oh boo, they like, boo oh, because you're on the going ground. To the ground yeah. But if you got a good announcer who's like, oh, watch this, he's trying to slip an arm mm-hmm. bar right here, mm-hmm. you know, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh shit, he just got an arm bar. Now you're more interested in seeing the setup of it so yeah so anyways i don't know where i was going with the whole announcement yeah thing, but. yeah i was just talking shit i mean there, there's there's some athletes out there that do a really good job but there's some of them that you're just like i don't know, like boomer Sison. like i just can't i can't listen to that guy well oh. my boy my boy brennan tried it for a minute and it didn't work out really. did he really yeah brennan was la- last year the year no you're that guy's like a renaissance man know, he he's a he, he is he's, a, he's i think a i can i think i, can, I hope i can announce it on there because i think he's told me he got the Oh, uh, man. Yeah, can yeah. you? I'm sure he got the he got paid, dude. He's got his house, so I'm sure he could talk about it. Mm-hmm. I don't know, yeah. but my boy's so fucking. He is. Uh, he's a renaissance man. He's he's yeah. a rare combination of intelligence, hard work, charisma, and then just in, like incredible athleticism. Yeah. You don't find that combination. And he's just a good dude. And he's a very good dude. Yeah. You know, great family. Seems like he seems like a good dad. Um, but yeah, very very cool guy. You know what I mean? So very cool. very cool you guy. Know, for sure, self made, yeah. extremely successful on his own right. Besides yeah, yeah. the fact the that local he boy dude came from Santa Cruz out by Justin. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he's man, he's a really good dude. Mm-hmm. For sure, will be somebody who'll be a long term friend of mine. We've built a really good relationship. Yeah, you got a little bit of a man crush on him. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, well, no, yeah. we've we've both talked about. We got like an equal one going on here. Like there's, <laughs> this, there's I watched that video. There's this. There, what was crazy when we first got to <laughs> when we first started. So he, you know, he reached out to me for Orange Theory, and there was there was definitely a bit of clashing at first, which I find almost always happens with some of these some of the well, strong personalities. The male friends that yeah. I end up bonding with for the longest, there is a little bit of this power struggle when you first meet. He's an alpha. That's why. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. You know, like as yeah. as all we all are, right? Yeah. So yeah. when you initially meet but what I like about someone like him and like us is you can be an alpha you get mutual respect and still not have a, a an ego that gets in the way. No, because yeah. a lot of times you well, have that's a real alpha. Right. That's a real a, a real alpha is confident. A, a false alpha male or female or whatever is insecure um and it's it's in cocky and and when they meet another real alpha they can't they can't mix with them when two really really confident honestly confident people meet 
they may have different disagreements and stuff, but then there becomes this mutual, mutual respect. Mutual respect, 100%. That's 100%. That's, that's exactly what it was. It was mm-hmm. like this back and forth at the very beginning, and then it was like, okay, I get it. You know what I'm saying? I, I see I see how you think. You, I see how you think. Okay, cool. And so that was when yeah, we- Yeah, because he, he gave you a lot of latitude wisely. Yeah. He wisely gave you a lot of latitude. Right, that, which I respected that. Right? Yeah. The, he, had, he had the awareness to go like, you know what? I'm just going to let this dude kind of do his thing inside my my facility mm-hmm. right even though there's things that we didn't see eye to eye or we agreed on a lot of things uh he he had this, his smarts and intelligence to kind of let me do my own thing which mm-hmm. is why i was even there there's no way that you could get me to go work for some corporate franchise type place and and oh i think all of us are unemployable in that regard yeah that'd be very <laughs> difficult to yeah, work for it would be tough, for that man. kind of thing my, you know i've been meaning to reach out my but they let go of my buddy mike over there so it's, really yeah it's, you know this i is thought a, he was killing this, it. this is what happens and you know i feel bad for a lot of the trainers because i told them that like two years ago this is what will happen you guys are a part of this during the heydays. The the company's exploding. Everybody's making fun, money. When that goes on, there's a lot of high fiving. There's not a lot of like stress about what you're not doing perfectly, or no one's really caring about forgetting this or forgetting that. And there's a lot of latitude uh, within the business right now. And, and I remember telling them all like, enjoy this. You know, make as much money as you can, learn as much as you can, have a good time while you're here. But don't be don't be naive and think that this is going to be like this forever. Like, you know, the trainers get paid top dollar there. At some yeah, point, they'll want to lower. They're going to cut that. Yeah, they'll cut that, and they'll want a bunch of robots. Yeah. Is what mm-hmm. they'll end up ha- yeah. wanting. Well, that's what if and when you know you know if OTF ever sells to somebody else, right? That's that's exactly what will happen. Uh, somebody will come in. It's like we talk about this off air, right? We like our business right now. We're we're in the major growth phase, right? And it, we're exactly there now. It's a fun time. It's a fun time to be an employee here. It's a fun time to be working here. You know, we're growing. We're doing better. We're doing better. We're doing better. And then at one point, a, a business starts to the progress and the growth will slow down. And when it does, you know, if you're a company that reached a point where you want to sell, you typically sell right there. And then the, the new the new guy or girl comes in and goes, okay, let's evaluate the entire business. Let's look at all the areas that we're not optimizing and let's do the areas where we're, yeah, we're, we're blowing, here, blowing money. And here's, now, here's the difference. The difference between – because I've seen two sides of this. I've seen like the Mark Masteroff who you know, started 25 Fitness and I saw after Masteroff where you know, they had these big corporate interests or whatever. And you see this with other Speaking businesses. Speaking of that, did you book the interview yet? He still has to contact me back. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. I'm going to contact him again. But you see this, uh, you see this sometimes and the, the people I respect the most are the ones that remember – they remember and they're loyal to the people that got them where they are. Now, I'm that kind of person, right? Mm-hmm. We ever get to that point where we sell the company or whatever, who knows, that could be 15, 20, whatever years from now. I'm going to remember all the people that were with us in the beginning, and I'm going to make sure everybody gets taken care of versus what you sometimes see where they forget. You know, oh, they're yeah. like, oh, oh yeah. and you saw that a little bit with 24 after Mark left. He took, you know, he took care of his boys, rightly so. They were the ones in the trenches. But then you saw the new guys come in, and they didn't know what the fuck was going on, and you saw an exodus of talent. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. so that's the thing. So I wanted to remember how we had that little discussion about uh, tariffs, and and you know how Trump's imposing these tariffs and trying to create this whatever, yeah, creating yeah. a trade and war I'm, with everybody. And, I'm t- and I keep saying tariffs are just a tax. It's just a tax on shit, and it's bad. It's terrible economics. It gets worse. You're gonna love this, and this is why. This is one reason why tariffs get on my nerves, and this is an, and, and this is another reason why government is just so inefficient and ridiculous and silly, and how the average American has no idea how this works, so everybody's just blind and just, oh, okay, whatever, that sounds good. They have oh, no idea what's happening. Right fuck. Now. So here's what happened, right? Trump imposes tariffs on goods from China, and China then retaliates with higher tariffs on U.S. goods. Yeah. So obviously what happens is American farmers <clears throat> and others start getting hurt from this. Not to mention consumers are going to start paying more. How are they getting hurt? Well, because now China's charging more uh, uh, or or slapping stuff on our stuff. So now American farmers' products that are getting exported are more expensive. So now they're getting hurt also. So it's this war. It's a tariff war. Nobody ever wins this. And the consumer ends up losing every single time. Now, because American farmers are starting to suffer and because they're very organized and because American farmers have powerful lobbies, especially the wheat, soy... Uh, corn, you know, uh, lobbies, which are some of the most powerful lobbies in America, and they already get subsidies. Subsidies, yeah. People crazy. don't realize this. A lot of your tax money goes to, literally, just goes to these farmers. Yeah. 
for free for whatever reason because we hooked them up a long time ago. So now they're complaining. We should do that for kale. Well, now that they're complaining and they're like, hey, we're, we're suffering because now China's raised our tariffs. So what does the Trump administration do? They announced another $12 billion in agriculture subsidies to help the farmers. So now not only are we paying more for Chinese goods, more for American goods, or we're losing money from because they're getting tariffed, Wait. but now we're also getting taxed even more. So we're getting taxed. On top of it. Awesome job. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So we're getting screwed. I heard even, too, the, the tax relief that we're supposed to get as corporations was paid for by our already existing debt. Oh, th- yeah, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but we're basically getting screwed all the way around. It's higher all prices. It's a bunch of hot air. Yeah, higher prices on goods. Uh, you know, our farmers are, you know, our products are getting more expensive as a result of the tariffs that China puts on, and we pay higher yeah. taxes. Cool. For the government subsidies. So it's basically a gangbang. We're getting screwed from all, all directions. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Yeah. Oh. And this is what ends up happening Damn with it. these types of things. And so this is what irritates me about uh, about Trump is he plays- This is why I hate politics. Dude. He plays into the nationalism so it sounds good because he's like, yeah, China and we're going to help our farmers and everybody's, you know, because the, the picture of the farmer in the American person's mind, like what do you think of when you think of a farmer, right? The red barn, right? And Overalls, the, you know, yeah, right. yeah, like the good old like family. The That's simple not, life. Yeah, farms don't look like that anymore. It's a massive, co- you know, company. It's all machines. It's a m- massive corporation, yeah. and they're in bed with uh, with government. So there yeah. you go. Unfortunate. Now hey, have it, you guys seen? Did you guys see our boy? Uh, Enzo? We should give him a plug right here. So Enzo, let's get his he's fucking doing a great job. What's his t- What's his name on his on his YouTube? So he started a little vlog of like life in the life of Mind Pump Enzo, and he's been vlogging coming to work. Yeah, he's he's uh, honorary Mind Pump Enzo now. Yeah, like what, <laughs> what's he's, his, he's, he's being smart. Yeah. I think he's doing. First off, he does those in a day. Yeah. I mean, the kids. No, they're entertaining. I, I that last one was really good, dude. The kid's seventeen. He does all that in a day. What he's is got some talent? I'm, I'm looking it up right now. What is the? Did, did you, did you see the? Uh, he this last video he did the little skinny dipped uh, packets. Yeah. How come we don't get those ones, Doug? Mm-hmm. I want it. They send us the big bags, which I appreciate. Yeah. But he orders the the. It's under. Oh, it's under. Oh, it's his name, Enzo. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not it. That's it? not it. No, because that says two subscribers. That's not oh, it. Oh, maybe not. You gotta click, right, on. click on the click on the video that says what it's like to work at Mind Pump, Doug. And uh, no, it that's it. Okay, that is right. it. Yeah, so it's it. his, his first name is Enzo. His last name is C O G L I T O R E. Colliatore. That's a nice Italian last and name. Enzo is E N Z O. But he has he orders the you get these little small packets. They look like. Did you see the? Yeah. Vid- did you guys watch the video? He yeah, had it yeah. in there, mm-hmm. dude. So he's so right now. I'm I'm also coaching him right on the side. I'm helping him with nutrition and training. So you're the one who keeps feeding the skinny dip. No, dude. So he, <laughs> he sends me a message yesterday. It's so funny, right? He sends me and he's and he's a smart kid. So he tries to he tries to. What's the word? Um, Justify. Y- yeah, he's smart. He knows what he's what he's what he's doing basically. So I'm gonna re- I'm gonna scroll back and said what he says. And I changed his macros now. I'm putting him on a cut because he's doing this this six week competition with us. But it's something like, hey, I got this you know this craving, and I think this will help. And you know what does he say real quick? Let me see here real quick. <laughs> he goes, it was a snack, and it totally helped you know help me out. And he goes because I'm 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 really hungry. And I'm like, well, you know, obviously we know why you're hungry. You're burning body fat. Like yeah. you're in a deficit. So I'm like, I said, you're hungry because your metabolism is, is firing up. I said, but you're uncomfortable with hunger. I, need, I said, you need to deal with it. Welcome to big boy land. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm like, do you want to get shredded? Embrace it. I said, then, then if yes, then make friends with cravings. If no, then let cravings run mm. your life. And so he's like, okay, I'll do it, you know. <laughs> so, so great. It's so great, you know. Oh man. <laughs> but good for him, man. He does these he's smart because he's coming here, he's learning from us. He gets to be in this environment. He's asking us questions about fitness and stuff, which I love and I I, I embrace. I can see I really enjoy it when somebody uh, is not taking advantage of that's the wrong word, but when somebody sees the opportunity. Yeah. And maximizes it. In, well, in a, appreciates their environment. Yeah, like he's maximizing it. Dude, you know? kids on his third book that I've recommended to him since he's been here. Are you kidding me? Third. Wow. He's fucking not. Little, little machine. He hasn't even been here, what, a month? Wow. A month? Yeah. Maybe a month? Dude, you know, I tell you what, he's, you know, and I hope I'm not uh, putting him on blast or anything, but he's he's a, he's a well off kid. He's got a lot of things going for him. He's, he's wealthy family. But he is a very hardworking kid. He doesn't show. He doesn't act like he's spoiled. Right? He comes in. He busts his ass, 
and he does shit like this, man. I really like that. Yeah, I like I, seeing that. I'm excited to see where it goes. Like, I mean, the, the, again, because you could tell he's a hard worker. He's learning right now. Like, he's reading about all this stuff right now too. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So he's like, he's learning how to optimize. I have to pay him because he's helping. Yeah, <laughs> he's helping. <laughs> he's helping Taylor. Uh, so he reports to Taylor. So a lot of the work they're doing is related to YouTube and optimizing the YouTube channel and the thumbnails and things like that. And so they're kind of, he's, he's been like reading like crazy and he's the one providing a lot of good information back to both Taylor and Drew to help them out. So I'm really excited to see him kind of do his own thing, what he's doing right now with the vlog. I like what to he's be doing. honest with you. This is the way I prefer uh, to, to build staffs is to start off with people who are new and then watch them grow and learn within us and become kind of, you know, become part of the brand versus get, cause I used to love hiring trainers and salespeople who had talent and who were hungry, but who didn't have lots of experience. Yeah. The ones that had tons of experience. Well, Cause they're easier to mold. Yeah. And sometimes the ones with all the experience, it's like, it's like training a new recruitment pattern. You know what I mean? Like if you have a terrible recruitment pattern that you've been doing for 10 years, yeah, it's hard to go back and learn a new one, but sometimes somebody comes in with nothing and it's easier to start them off on the right foot, you know? Right, right. Martial artists will say this all the time. If you go you go do like Muay Thai and you, you're a black belt in Taekwondo, they'll say it, it's harder many times than just teaching a beginner. Yeah. Yeah, because you already have like those specific ways of, of doing things. It's just ingrained yeah. in your brain, yeah. you know? How's your workouts going, by the way? Good. I'm 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 doing well with the the workouts and and the the everyday activities and it's it's starting to kind of pick up too. Like I I was in a dip there as far as like strength and performance. Is it coming back? It's coming back a little oh, bit. Oh, you yeah. might be just adjusting. I think that's what it was. Where are you doing most of your training? I do most of it at my house now. Uh, and then that total did you put gym, up the you you put up everything the rack and everything? Not yet. That's okay. that's supposed to be coming this week. But I did buy like a. Uh, Trap bar and a bunch of weights and um, dumbbells. This is like and Rocky everything. versus Drago or whatever, right? Yeah, this is fucking this guy. I'm going old school Bol boulders and ropes. Like you're, you're gonna win this competition Dude, don't down the mountain. Fucking fuck motivated yeah. him even more. <laughs> I'm Rocky. What the fuck, <laughs> Dude? You're you're. I no, walked you're in. Even Drago. I walked in. No, you're Drago, bro. <coughs> yeah. You're closer to the Russian. That's I true. walked in That's today and I looked at you and your jawline is coming is coming out, dude. Ah. It's coming out, I'm bro. Losing, bro. This don't cool. don't believe him. Lean he's, doing, in. he's doing reverse psychology on you. I'm just keeping it real. With you, know what you know I'm saying? <laughs> no, no, I look fatter, to, dude. Hey, you look, you look good, bro. You're yeah. you're doing fine. Oh. You're doing fine. You're doing totally fine. No, you you enjoy some cheese this weekend. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm being honest. Yeah. I can tell both you guys are fucking changing really quick. That's the truth. Yeah. It's kind of fun to see this. You know what I mean? How everybody's kind of well, getting all jacked and shit. Yeah, I've been taking pictures. It's funny because Adam mentioned like getting made fun of like doing poses and shit. And like I actually was just looking at the mirror a little too long and then Courtney was like, caught you. Are you done? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no. <laughs> our oh, women, no, I'm bro, turning into them. Our women are the fucking hardest critics uh, ever, dude, for uh, sure. Yeah, she don't let me go at all. She busts my balls I'll tell all you time. what, she is a saboteur. <laughs> uh, I feel like you guys are paying her off. Uh, oh, what did she do? Oh, she, dude. <laughs> She gets like this every time I have. She like hates when I when I die to her. Like really, like I, I've I've figured it out. Like she just really does not like hanging out because I get irritable the first week or two, and I'm not like real fun to hang out with. And so she tries to just fuck with me the whole time. So she made like she made like this amazing looking cheesecake, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> cheesecake. I'm like fucking cheesecake. You never even made that for me. You make a cheesecake. It's <laughs> her first time. time ever. Yeah, first time. She's like, oh my god, and she got so, like some like five six star review thing and um you know the kids are just oh my god mom this is amazing you know gives it to the neighbor like this is the best thing i've ever had and like she's like there's one more oh and my like, god like, the fuck out of here oh wow oh it was dirty see I was instead, like, you're doing me dirty instead my girl is like she's she's a pain in the ass because I'll, I'll do something i'll eat something she'll be like is that is that part of your thing? Are you supposed to be doing that? Or oh, that's how does your gut feel when you do that? Are you sure that's a good thing to that's, do? So? That's Katrina. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Katrina would be talking <laughs> trash to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does she talk shit yeah. to you? Oh yeah, of course. Same thing. You know, Are, yeah. is that part of your plan right there? I don't think that's part <laughs> of the that? plan. Yes, it's part is of the what plan. You doing? Just count yeah. it in. Yesterday was my first day doing consistent three trigger sessions, and like fucking magic, I swear to God, do by the third trigger session, I, like two reps, and I get a pump. It's like. <laughs> I can feel it right away. I, uh, they're so awesome when you do them consistently. I yeah. absolutely love them. Yeah, they're legit. I am excited to to do the old school MAPS anabolic style work. I haven't I, done it fully like that in a long time. I'm surprised you switched to that. I thought that was kind of crazy. I thought that was a unique move of yours. Well, I did I did split. <laughs> I like it. I though. followed split for about 
five or six weeks. And but I, you know, here's the deal: like I had to change it up so I could go back to my bread and butter, to the way I know my body right. really responds best. If I stay on, you know, this maps anabolic style training forever, of course I got to switch it up, right? So I switched it up to split, which is very different. And so now, you know, I'm back on the, you know, MAPS anabolic style. It's abbreviated because it's kind of individualized. And my, every time, every time I do it, man, my body just responds like crazy, especially the trigger sessions. It kind of blows me away. No. How about you? How about you? Did you train yesterday? Yeah. No, I've been, I've been consistent, man. Real consistent. You're looking good too, man. <clears throat> yeah. You say that, but I, you know, I tell you, I took my first uh, bathroom selfie yesterday. Yeah, I haven't seen your shirt off. So. Yeah. Not so good. <laughs> <laughs> not so good not so good i mean i feel like uh, i just got this like pool of estrogen like around my fucking waist that's quite the visual <laughs> that's what it feels yeah. like dude like it you're getting the sidekicks going on it just gives uh, I, like, like squishy it's really it's it's interesting to me like um you're, dude bro it's natural i'm telling you store body fat differently Oh yeah, well, I mean, I, not natural or not, I, I think it's more being low <laughs> testosterone and higher estrogen, yeah. which is also why I still battle right now with the you know the gynecomastia too. It's like I think that you know a combination of the low testosterone, higher estrogen levels is giving me that with what I'm dealing with that, mm -hmm. and then also the way that my body is storing body fat. So. But I mean, for me, like you just started, though. It, you know what I mean? It's going to show up in well, about. Well, you, you, I really haven't just started. That's you know, Katrina said the same thing too. I'm like, I don't know why you guys think I've been fuck. I haven't stopped. I just what you guys see me doing is ramping volume up and intensity. Yeah, like, but I've seen that's more. Coming. I've seen more changes in your body in the last four weeks, three weeks than in the previous five. Oh, you know? yeah. yeah, no, 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 That's what I mean by you just started. Right. I don't mean you just started Yeah, my body out. just started, the way I look at it is my body just started finally responding. That's what I mean. You know, it's finally responding yeah. and so, because I knew before I couldn't ramp up the volume and intensity because my body wasn't responding. I would just, I'd be working against it. Like at that point it was about health and, and trying mm -hmm. to get hormonally balanced. Just trying to mean, like control the damage. Yeah, exactly. That's all, that's, that's the way my training looked for the last six months and so, now that I feel like it's somewhat responding, and it is responding, but it's still not responding like I would like it to. Like I was telling you the other day on the podcast was, you know, I'm used to, if I am like really dialed, like, and I'm staying right where I need to be nutritionally, I'm putting the work in, I'm, I'm progressively overloading, like I'm doing all the things that I need to do, I literally can see like change day to day, you mm -hmm. know, like just very subtle, you know what I'm saying? For the average person, probably can't, but because I'm so used to critiquing my physique like that and paying attention to all the numbers and tracking, I can look and, and weigh and see and look and go, okay, like, nice. I'm, I'm right on pace. I'm right on pace mm -hmm. where here it's a little bit different right now. You know, right now it's, I feel like, uh, you know, we'll see like I'm, the way I'm trying to do it is I'm going to take these snapshots every week and then review it at the, at the now end. How of do week. you do that? Same time, same mm -hmm. time of the day, same mirror, same lighting, same pose. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, it's for me, right? Even the ones I used to post way back in the day on my Instagram, I never did it like, I never did it after a pump and fill, all carb. Fill. I mean, I did I did examples for people way back when, but, you know, when I do it, I do it so I could compare. Like I want, And yeah. so I don't want to manipulate all those things to look cooler in the picture. So, you know, it's a, it's a basic picture of myself. It's, uh, you know, I do it. Typically, like around four o'clock in the afternoon, after I get off of work, I come home and you know I had the same amount of meals, and it's just me standing and I do a front shot and a back shot, and that's enough for me to kind of see. I talk about my back as my north star, so for me, the most consistent thing that uh, I can see change and is my back. Mm. So I like to use that uh, more than anywhere else. I've noticed like with my stomach. You know, certain foods, I could be inflamed a little bit. That could throw off the look where when I turn around and I look at my back, I can look at my back and tell if I'm making the right progress. You don't store much on your front midsection. Yours is more on the side or back. Yeah. You don't really store like that front belly. I'm all front belly, like yeah. all there. If I get if I gain body fat, I'll get the I'll be the lean arm dude with the big belly. Yeah, it's just how my body. Yeah, stores I'm kind of like that too, though. I get I get a little pooch belly too. If I if you I have to push it though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, if I'm really falling out of shape, I mm. you know, which right now I'm in. You know, we just did their test. Like I'm in some of the worst shape I've ever been in. I've been worse. You know, I was worse before we started Mind Pump, and I did the whole you know journey from. What, fat to what fat. about strength? How's your strength feeling? 
Good. That is actually what I've been really happy with. So uh, when we first started, See, that's to me is the best sign. To me, that's the best sign. Always. Yeah, well, that's that, and that's what's got me the most excited. Was you know, other than the the stupid pull that I did with the back because I was getting so I was getting so excited with my strength. Like yeah. I had pulled over four hundred, and then all of a sudden I'm repping it. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. okay, I've got my strength coming back, and then I hurt myself. But uh, you know, I'm back to being able to incline press over 225, which is good weight for me, you know, and especially being that I know that I'm 100% natural because I can imagine yeah, if that's I was really good, right? So if I'm inclining in incline chest pressing over 225, like that's that's solid for mm -hmm. me. So and it's taken me a while to get back up to that. I remember when I was just doing the whole maintaining my health, you know, I was working out with 135, like and it was mm -hmm. <laughs> it was challenging. Mm -hmm. So I was that weak. Yeah, no, for uh, my strength is. Doing pretty good right now. Although I, I, you know, I've always pushed my strength, but I can feel like I've been pulling every week. I've been pulling in the in the low to mid fives, uh, you know, which is for me that's not bad. Although I need to take a little break on the heavy deadlifts today. I could tell it was a harder. I pulled five, but I pulled five ten, and it was more of a grind than it normally is. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a back off and maybe use the trap bar next week. But strength. So for me, it's strength. My pump, vascularity is what I'll pay attention to, and then in terms of getting lean. My arms and shoulders pretty much always look pretty lean. It's my right near my belly button area. That's where I, for whatever reason, I think it's just stored body fat in one damn area. So that's the part when I start to see that go down, I know that I'm. That's on the see. That's where I'm the same way. Like right. I have this, and it's I can tell when I'm driving, right? So when I'm driving, I'm oh, kind of just a little. Yeah, like I can if I can get a hold of something, like I go, okay, I got work to do. Yeah. And then if it, it'll get to a point when I know I'm really lean, where I just get skin there. Once oh, I know, yeah. I, once I know I'm grabbing ab, ab and skin, and that's it. Then I know, yeah. like, okay, now I'm now I'm where I want to be. Yeah. You know, I know you are. You and I are probably the taking the most supplements out of out of the three of us. Justin, are you taking anything right now? Are you using anything right now? Um, I'm trying as hard as I can to keep it just steak, but I, <laughs> <laughs> he's taking steak protein. Cause are you, are you even allowed to use like, I mean, is it, or I mean, I know you're going to do whatever the fuck you want, but yeah, I mean, yeah, are you, the would I'm you, are you like technically strict. not like if you were to use like the green juice from Organifi or the red juice from them, would that be like not carnivore? Like you can't do, you're not supposed to do that. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I'm just trying to like, if I have anything that's like over three grams of sugar, like I'm not like it. I'm trying as much as I can to avoid like so whether I'm drinking something um, or like I've, I've had um, so none of the juices but you could do you could do like turmeric right you yeah use their so that's what I have done actually is some of the turmeric mm. um, just for the inflammation but other than that I mean I'm not like initially I was inflamed I think um, once I, I started really ramping up again and like trying to lift heavy and, and was just eating a lot of meat like it, I, I mean I was pretty fucking sore uh, and so I was using the turmeric to help with that, but now that's sort of dissipated uh, a bit. And so I'm just, I'm actually not, I'm not too sore now going through everything. And, um, I got my energies kind of coming back naturally. So, um, at some point though, like to, to keep my calories kind of like, you know, um, you know, at maintenance, at least like I, I may, I may start reintroducing vegetables and, and doing that and then coming mm. back to carnivore towards the end. So I started doing my post-workout anabolic cholesterol shake. I started doing that the yesterday and it's, uh, I'll just do protein powder. So I use the Organifi vanilla and I don't necessarily recommend this because there's always a risk of salmonella, salmonella, although the risk is very, very small, you know, do your own, this is a, you know, this this is on your own, right? This is up to you, so you can't blame me if you get sick. But I'll throw in, you know, four to six raw egg yolks in the shake, mm -hmm. and I'll blend that thing up, and I get my post-workout cholesterol and protein from, you know, the protein powder. <clears throat> and and if I don't do that, then I'll do chicken liver, and I'll have that post-workout. And I'm telling you, dude, cholesterol with some protein post-workout is fucking magic. And, and it's – I'm. At some point, it's going to be in a supplement. See, I was thinking about doing something like that for breakfast. Like, I grabbed the protein from Organifi, and I, I've been contemplating on whether or not to do, like, up my breakfast with, with a shake. Uh, like that, I know. <laughs> well, how long have might you been? be a contradiction. Well, you've been car carnivore now for a week. Almost a week. Yeah, a week. I would go two or three weeks and then do it because you're right. you're using this as an I'm elimination. I'm still eliminating. Diet. Yeah, exactly. So you That's want your body. Yeah, you want a baseline. So then we throw it in. You can see if you have any reactions to 
any of the you know vegetables or plants that are in there because it is a yeah plant-based. I may introduce yeah with the green juice or mm-hmm, the protein mm-hmm. powder Absolutely. so I've had a lot of people ask me kind of like well and I and I'm tracking now so I'll try and remember to share kind of a weekly update since it's been a solid week now that I've been tracking like all my macros and, and where I'm falling on my fat secret is I'm falling between 2,800 and 3,200 calories so an average of 3,000 calories. Not bad is where I'm at, and uh, my my ratio, my breakdown of of carbs, fat, and protein is I'm at 25 percent carbohydrates, uh, 48 to 50 percent fat, and then 27 percent protein. So that's the breakdown that I, uh, my fat secret looks mm. like right now. And that wasn't like really planned. I'm not like oh, it's just gonna... where it's falling. Nice. Yeah, it's just where it's where it's falling right now. I've slowly kind of started to reintroduce more carb. And that, what I see is the carbohydrate intake will start to increase more than that. Where are you getting all your fats from? Um, so bacon, tri tip steak, fatty you know, meats, yeah, fatty, fatty meats. meats. I still I incorporate too butter with like w- when we do our vegetables, olive oil, avocado. Um, yeah, those are those are my probably my main sor- sources. Mm-hmm. I really don't have to chase fat; like it's it's pretty easy for me to incorporate it. And uh, this was really something I got from Sal. Like it wasn't something that for the longest time I just never ate fat with vegetables. Like it just didn't. Oh yeah, yeah. I, it seemed counterproductive to me. It was mm-hmm. just like, oh, uh, you know, if I'm eating vegetables, it's healthy, clean, and lean. I shouldn't be adding a bunch of calories to it. But it actually makes it really enjoyable. It's an easy way for me to bump fat naturally, and so. You know, we. What do you do? Do you use olive oil? Between olive oil or butter or something? <clears throat> yeah, we do more butter. Like so, one of my favorite things that Katrina does right now. Here's a here's one for you guys. Is uh, we take spinach, portobello mushrooms, and a uh, and onions and a tablespoon of butter, and you saute. It oh yeah, it. we had that. At, uh, didn't oh. we have that at the house? Yeah, yeah, you guys tried that. That was on the steak or with the steak. Yes. That was silly. That was really good. I eat it with everything now. Sounds it's good. so it's so <laughs> right, Justin salad. <laughs> well, the the portobello oh, mushrooms, mm. portobello mushrooms are already kind of juicy and flavor get, have good flavor, and then they suck up all the butter, mm-hmm. and then and then the and then the butter in the pan is enough to get all the spinach kind of mm. wet, and so oh, it's like that is my go to uh, green right now. You know what I've been doing is I'll get baby bok choy, and I'll saute it with a, a bunch of ghee, and then I just put powdered garlic and maybe some red you know pepper flakes and salt and pepper and that's it and it's fucking amazing it's so good who cooks more at your house you or jessica depends who's home first really that's all it is yeah it really doesn't matter we're both pretty i mean she does a better job she's definitely more versed at cooking than i am but we're both we're pretty simple like we like basic well, you Foods. cook. You cook like I mean, you cook like we cook for sure. Where we cook mm. for health first. Yeah. Like so that's, Katrina and I are always. I mean, I shouldn't say we. She does most of the cooking. <laughs> I don't really do much. <laughs> we do a lot of planning and scheduling. <laughs> yeah. We do a lot of organizing. <laughs> no, don't. Yeah, yeah. Let's be. Let's be honest. I don't really do any of that. Uh, <laughs> but I do. I mean, I help uh, pick it out. How about that? So I have. You know, I have. You some, do the hunting. Well, you know what? Actually, <laughs> actually, what she leans that's on what me. I do. She leans on me for the the macro breakdown on it, right? To tell her like, okay, that's cool. That's something we can yeah. do. Or that works, or you can have that or like don't have more than that in there and so she kind of does she'll go look hunting for recipes that you know she likes to put together right now we're doing one of my favorites too and i won't be able to give you all the stuff that is but she makes this like um uh what's the vinegar the uh bca vinegar what's it called i can't think oh brags yeah brags uh she uses that i've never used it oh man she makes this uh, amino acid vinegar that's funny well so i remember it says that on the so check out the um uh, it's the apple cider vinegar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's uh, if you if you try one of my meal, I have two meals I brought today, and it's there. It's bison, and then she puts that stuff with mushrooms, onions, and I want to say garlic and something else, and she puts it in the blender, and then she pours it in with the the bison, and it gives this really good flavor. The bison, and then she takes a sweet potato, and we mash it. And the sweet potato mashed, mixed with the bison ground, and that kind of like oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's mm. bomb! And then that some, and then some green beans in there. Like, you can have Justin over; he'll just eat the. Bison. I know, I know. Oh, we've been oh, getting all your bison. This, you know, since we're on this kick, and this always starts, uh, it always creates a, a lot of creativity in the kitchen for Katrina and I during this time. Or again, for Katrina, during this time, <laughs> I want to get with Doug since I think Doug's the other one with the the plethora of recipes over there and create a damn recipe book we've been talking about this forever and we always get people hammering us for it 
um, we need to start like keeping. That'd be awesome. Keeping I track. literally have zero contribution to that. <laughs> <laughs> me. That's why this diet made so, so much sense to me. I'm like, the one thing I can do is barbecue. That's it. Dude, yeah. It's funny because we were, I don't remember where we were driving and we were talking about the contest and Justin was laughing. He was like, it's another thing I need to think about. He's like, I need now. I need to think about this. Fuck. So it's like perfect. At the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta keep it simple, man. <laughs> My life has too much stuff in it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Good deal. This quaz brought to you by Organifi. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organifi fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organifi totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Carmen Alessa. Carmen As, Electra? No. Oh, she, is she of, back? She's a fan of Mind Pump? No, Carmen Electra. since Dennis Rodman. Tell me you guys loved Carmen Electra. Come on, oh, bro. Yeah, that was every, that's what everybody... She was fantastic. When we were 15, hot. 16? I, I had her poster. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Doug. Go she ahead. Probably no worries. <laughs> All right, Carmen Alessa. As your challenge of getting shredded is going on right now, would you rather add cardio to your cut or restrict calories more or maybe even add more strength training? Great question. Excellent. When somebody is starting, to, wants to embark on a get lean journey, which one should you start with first? Well, what's the most popular idea out there? Yeah, go do cardio. Yeah, cardio. Yeah, everybody's that's, like, oh, I'm on the answer almost lose weight, everybody Which says. is the absolute opposite for me. It's the last place. Always. I go. Right. It's the last place to go. It's the easiest variable to manipulate and change. So that's why I make it last. Mm-hmm. Like, it's why. Yeah. Why do that when you don't need to do that yet? I'd rather try and manipulate my volume in my training or my my macros and my calories. Well, mm-hmm. sometimes I do have to admit I, I've learned things from you guys, and this is definitely in that arena because like my go-to back in the day was to do it all at once. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. This, this, and this. Oh, all three. That's all everybody, above. though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's not just you. I was the same way too. I think everybody is like that, right? It's just, yeah. if, especially, especially if you have a competitive personality. Like if you have a competitive or an athletic mentality, and you and you approach getting lean like you do playing a sport or competing at something. You. That's how you compete, right? You you give it everything you got. Like mm-hmm. I'm yeah. gonna give everything. But this is science and human physiology mm-hmm. and nutrition There's smarter ways to do it it's, it's also right. you have to learn it's also just human behavior like you you here's the thing like the odds that you're going to stick to something consistently long term and maintain whatever results you get are much lower when you start out doing everything all at once because what we have to understand and I'm going to get into which one actually works better as well but we we can't separate What's most effective from which one is most likely to be done because of human behavior? You can't separate the two because people always do that. They go, oh, well, studies show that this works best. But as a trainer, I know that doesn't work best because people aren't- this one's going to stick. No one's going to be able to do that long term. So what you need to understand is when you're trying to change your body, unless you want to change it and you don't care if it goes back to where it is now, if you're trying to change your body for the long term, what you're really doing on a fundamental level is- changing fundamental behaviors that you have, right? You're trying to change things that are very important, or at least that take up a large part of your life, like eating, okay? Everybody eats every day. Everybody eats several times a day. Food surrounds uh, parties and culture and events and context and all these different things, and we're surrounded by food. So changing how you eat is a big fucking deal. It's a very big deal. It's like changing your job and, and moving to a new place. It's, it's literally like that. It's, it's, a, it's a massive change. So that's number one. Becoming more active, well, that's another big change. You are now adding something that you hopefully are going to maintain for the rest of your life to your life that you weren't doing before. That's a fundamental change in, in your behavior. And then, of course, you know how you feel about exercise and how you feel about it yourself. So your two, really the two general ways that people go about this, and, and one is more popular than the other, unfortunately, is everything but the kitchen sink all at once, which good luck trying to stick with that behavior, with all those changes all at once. And the other way is to do it slowly. And what I mean by slowly, and this is different from person to person now, and I want to be clear here, some people can make more changes 
than other people and it can stick and other people have to take smaller changes. What you have to do is you have to ask yourself the following questions. What is a change that's going to challenge me, but I also know simultaneously something that for sure I can do, right? So you want to challenge yourself a little bit. Otherwise, it's worthless. It's not going to mean anything. But you also want to make sure it's something that for sure you know that is something I'm going to stick to. And then do that. And then when you're doing that, and that becomes like a part of your life, and it's like second nature, then you add to it. That right there is the formula for long-term success from both the behavioral standpoint, but also just pragma- just pragmatism. It's actually what has always worked for my clients. Now, in terms of what works for your body, here's the deal. You start adding a shit ton of cardio right out the gates, you will notice uh, a change in body weight right away, but you're going to do a lot of work for that fat loss. And your body will learn to adapt to it and you'll plateau very, very quickly. Your metabolism will start to adjust. And then you got to do all that hard work to keep your body weight where it's at. And the only way to lose more is to add more. And you know where that goes. At some point, eventually, you're in this shitty situation where I've had so many clients like this where, you know, they come to me and, and, and they're like, oh, I need your help. And I'll ask them, well, what are your activity levels? Well, I started running, you know, three months ago and now I run, you know, eight miles a week. And I lost, you know, 12 pounds initially, but I have another 20 pounds to go. Like, do I just add more running? And I'm like, well, how's the running going for you now? Oh, well, it's t- difficult to get into my life and I'm not really enjoying it anymore. I'm like, okay, we got to back out of that because that is a, right. that is not a formula that's going to mm, work. Right. So that's always tends to be my advice. It's funny because I'm working with someone right now, a good friend of mine um, who I've known for a long time. And she's been the kind of person that's, that's always tried to lose weight like this. Like she'll do tons of cardio and severe calorie restriction. Mm -hmm. And so I've slowly been backing her out of that, adding resistance training, slowly bumping her calories. And I, and she's very afraid of like weighing herself and, Oh my God, I feel like I'm getting fatter and I'm trying to, you know, I'm coaching her this whole way. And Jessica's working with her too. And Jessica's excellent with coaching people through that, through that period or whatever. And so the other day she's like, I couldn't, help it, I had to get on the scale because I just felt so fat. And you know what she found? She lost a pound. Mm. And it blew her mind. Yeah. Completely blew her mind. And she's eating you know, 300 calories more than she was eating before. So mm-hmm. here's what I t- typically do with people. And and what I do for me is different because I'm not coming into this as a beginner or somebody who doesn't have a lifestyle of fitness. When I get a beginner, first thing I do is add strength training. That's it. It's the first thing I do. We're going to do strength training. We're going to do it two days a week or three days a week. We're going to build some strength, build some muscle, uh, speed up your metabolism. I want you to keep your calories the same. Then the next thing I do is I don't change your calories. I just change, try to slowly change the types of foods that they eat. So rather than saying we're cutting or adding calories and that stuff, I'll say, okay, let's try adding some vegetables. Let's try reducing some of the processed foods. Uh, let's start changing the types of foods that you eat because we know that whole natural foods tend to you know, suppress your appetite, at least in comparison to processed foods, and you just start to feel better. Then the next thing I do is I slowly increase calories as I get stronger. And then when I feel like we're at a good place, that's when I start to cut calories and I still don't add cardio. That happens later on towards the end. Well, when you when you throw three different variables in like this, like I I can make a case and an argument uh, for each one. Right. And so, for example, if you're somebody who, you know, actually tracks and knows how much you move throughout the day. Uh, I would address movement, right? So like if you know that I only step 4,000 steps every single day, then one of the easiest things that I can do to start heading you down the right path is to start to encourage more neat. So I take you from 4,000 to six or 8,000 steps a day, not cardio, just moving more. That's that person. But what if this person is somebody who is already moving 15,000 to 20,000 steps or maybe even was doing cardio three times a week? Well, I absolutely don't want to mess with that because that's something that they're already of, already doing in their life and they're already pushing it. There's not a lot of room to push it more. So I would totally leave that, leave that alone. Going to the calories. If you're somebody who's been coming off of a, a binge and you've been eating like crazy and, and you eat lots of fast food and high calorie foods and you eat a lot of junk food and you're up to four or 5,000 calories a day, well, I could potentially adjust those calories to have you reduce and come back down the other way. So that person, I would go that direction. Now, if you're somebody who's been strength training already for cons- a consistent amount of time, well, then adding more volume to that may not be the best thing to adjust. So there's going to be variables mm-hmm. To who you are, mm-hmm. there's going to be different answers for every person you're talking about. For sure, though, 
cardio is the last thing. And this is, again, why I think we were always coming out and saying this about cardio is not that nobody does it or we yeah, don't we're not see anti-cardio it. it's just that it's it's really the last place that most people should go when it comes to reducing body fat there's m- many other things that we can address you know i.e macronutrients calories neat uh training and you said strength training but it could be a different modality of training right so if maybe you're a strength you've been strength training you've been following like a maps anabolic phase one type of program or you follow like a power lifting type of routine and you've been doing that for a really long time well one of the great best things that we could do to start to see change in your body is to put you on a completely different type of adaptation send you send like a maps performance type of a program would be incredible for this person so and their body's going to see change and start to try and adapt so it really depends on the person and where they're currently at uh, as where my advice goes as far as to get shredded. The bottom line is the goal is definitely not to throw the whole kitchen sink at, at, at it at the very beginning. Not when you have 6, 8, 10, 12 weeks to get there and you want to, like Sal said, keep it off for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. You know, This is a total different answer too. Someone comes to me and says, Adam, uh, I haven't been doing any of these things. I got Vegas in two weeks. What do I do? Well, then fuck. I guess you could <laughs> throw, throw everything, throw the whole sink at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, because <laughs> it don't get busy, right? It don't fucking matter now. You know what I'm saying? You got two weeks. You haven't you haven't been eating well. You have you haven't been doing anything with your calories. You haven't been training correctly. You haven't been doing any cardio. You know what sucks about that? There's somebody listening right now that's that's like, oh, that's the fast way to do it. That's right. what I want. Right. Well, that, but here exactly. Yeah. But that person, I'm I'm talking to a person that has one to two weeks. But if you're just a normal person who's got plenty of time, you know, or you've got the ability to plan this out and do it correctly, and you actually want to keep your results and maintain it long term, then you actually want to be very strategic about how you implement these things. Plus, it also gives you an opportunity to implement one or two variables like the strength training and changing that up or just changing the macros or just changing your neat and seeing how the body responds. It'll teach you a lot of a lot about your own body and what's different about it. Like you know, for maybe for Justin, you know, adding a bunch of neat into his life doesn't really make a big difference to him, you know, but maybe for Sal or me, maybe that makes a huge difference. So, you know, it, it's also learning about your own individual body, because as much as we can sit here and talk about the science of, you know, what's the most quote unquote ideal approach to this, there's always going to be variables and mm. less is more in this situation. So changing less things and sticking to it and being consistent is better off than throwing a bunch of things at it in hopes that something works. Absolutely. And I mean, for me, like right now, what I, cardio is what I'm going to add for the last two weeks of this six-week challenge. Yeah. I'm waiting to the last two weeks. I'm going to throw in some cardio. And the last week, I'm going to do more cardio than I did the week before. And uh, and, and that's how I'm going to use it. I'm, I'm really not doing cardio now. The only thing I'm doing now is I'm just aware of my activity. So I yeah. may get up and move a little bit more than I normally do, but it's not some, I like to save that, like to save that for the very end. And plus here's the deal with cardio. I notice results with cardio for about two or three weeks and then it doesn't, then it doesn't do anything for me anyway. You know, it's interesting too. Like, and I, I'm kind of going against a little bit of what I would uh, have planned for myself, you know, as far as like, I'm going a bit on the extreme side, just as a, as an excuse to like, I was going to do this anyways, an elimination diet, um, to add that into the mix. But if, you know, if it was just up to me, there was like two major things I could have just cut out and had massive, you know, result from, and that's cheese and, and alcohol. Mm. Like those two things have made their way into rotation, you know, like on a weekly basis. And I, I, I realized like if that was like two, two variables right there that I could just, you know, easily, like easily adapt to like in my lifestyle, that would have been a way better answer. Cause then two, now my workouts wouldn't be as affected, which now I'm like, I'm sort of dealing and and navigating through that and kind of on my way back. But yeah, like that was a little bit of a setback, but you know, that's, that's the thing when you start really hammering your body from all different angles, uh, you're going to have to account for uh, overcoming all this. I think, things. I don't think I've ever, I can't think of a client off the top of my head that I've worked, I'm doing, you know, 20 years, right? 20 years of training. I can't think of a client that had long term success that did everything all at once in the beginning. I, I don't think I ever saw that. Or if I did, it's super rare. You can't. Rare. 
It, it, you just I don't know anybody. It, no. it just doesn't it, work it came that back, way, man. Well, it, because it's can think it's of. inevitable if you if you go from not doing all these things to doing all of these things. It's too much. It's it's there's a reason why you weren't doing a lot of those things before, right? You like, like it's the, just a drastic like, radical change, like cardio, restricting calories, and then strength training hardcore, right? So if you go from not doing any of these things to working your way up as as fast as you can to working out every single day to training really hard and intense to restricting calories and then also doing cardio as much as you possibly can like yeah that the ramp up to that will be the fastest change you'll ever see in your body for the first 1 to 3 weeks for sure because of all those variables mm-hmm. but then when you hit that 3 week mark from then on it's going the progress the grind, is going to be unbelievably incremental and small and then at one point, life fucking reminds you that you have other things to do in life. Like, yeah. oh, shit, I have a job. Oh, shit, I have a family. Oh, shit, I have a life and friends. I want to do other things. Oh, fuck, how do I do that with seven days a week of strength training and five to seven days a week of cardio yeah. and never getting to eat? And never having learned how to make that a part of your yeah. life because you just do it all at once. And it's funny, if you compare groups of people doing those two things, one group doing it slow, one group doing it fast, if the competition was five weeks or four weeks, you'd see faster results on the person doing everything. You stretch that out to 12 weeks and 16 weeks and longer, you start to see the other group pass them up and then stay there. And that's the thing. Even when I trained Doug, you know, when, when Doug was my client, Doug was a, a, a wonderful client, ideal client. He's the kind of person, you know, if he's He'll serious. He actually him. did what you said. Yeah. He'll do anything you tell yeah. him, right? He, know, came, to, love those he came to me and-, and Almost I'm, anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He came to me and it was like, you know, he's like, how many days a week are we going to work out? Because he's super motivated. really pressed you on that. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Uh, and I'm like, two days a week. And he's like, okay. And that's what we did. And what should I do with my nutrition? Well, start slowly. And I tell you what, dude, the guy within six months, it was like six months to a year, made one of the most radical changes you, you, you could ever see from having back pain to being able to deadlift, you know, over 400 pounds and having a six pack at like 47 years old. And it was, and we took that slow approach, even with someone like Doug, who was willing to do whatever and was very motivated. Next question is from David K. Silva. What are the pros and cons of working out alone versus working out with friends? Definitely different. It's definitely different, either either one. I so I work out currently with mm. uh, with Jessica, and what I enjoy working the things I enjoy about working out with Jessica are first off, I enjoy spending time with her, so we like to hang out, so that's fun. Uh, she watches my form, I watch her form. She keeps me in check um, and vice versa. So, and this is another thing too. I've worked out with women as fit, as, as workout partners in the past as well. And the thing about, and I, you know, about working out with a woman, I, I'm probably going to be stronger than her, which is good because it eliminates the, the, the tendency to want to lift heavier than my workout partner. Cause I, I'm already going to lift heavier. So I'm a little smarter about what I do. Um, and then on the flip side, uh, you know, I can tend to push them a little harder in terms of challenging them uh, with the weight. So I really enjoy those things about working out with Jessica. But when I also this is why he's going to lose. No, no, <laughs> and, no. I, I mean, she's <laughs> so you think she's hardcore, man, and she keeps me very consistent. But when I work out alone, working out alone is very. I can be very intense, very focused. And in a special totally different musical hey, selection, it's like, it's special like, zone. It's like this. Hey, would you like to go for a run and have someone on your back, or would you like just to go for a run? Which one's going to be easier yeah. for you? Like, is it carrying somebody else or having to help? Yeah. F- working out with someone else fucking sucks. Yeah. Well, it depends if you there's, have to carry them, but if they work out with you, there is, different. There is, there is, in my opinion, there is little to no benefit working out with somebody else. You, the one time that you decide- You've never to, had a workout partner? Of that course was, I had. No, that was, that was like- I had awesome workout partners. Okay. I had guys that pushed me when I was in my 20s and I did that whole thing for a long time and I thought that that's what I wanted to do, but that yeah. a lot of that thought process- was wrong. Like I, I was chasing what a lot of these young kids are chasing when they lift, which is purely intensity. Somebody else to yell in my ear and tell me five more and push me to the next oh, yeah, level. I don't, I don't like that. Where and I don't and 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 maybe when when you're first starting, if you got somebody who has been doing this for a really long time and you're still learning like mechanics, like so I could see value there. So let me backpedal a little bit. If you have somebody who is just starting off and you're you're very uh, insecure about the training yourself because you don't know if your form is good and you have a friend who has got 
better form than you and then he can help tell you or she can help tell you hey you're you know chest up retract your shoulders more or oh your your feet you're rocking towards like that stuff is all good like but once you get to a, a point where i like to think we're the level we're all at where nobody is going to look at my form and tell me like something I don't already feel and know is off. Like if I do a squat and my weight shifts to the balls of my feet at all, I know it before the person watching me knows it. Like I'm that aware of how I move. So I don't need someone else to tell me that. So then the only other place that there is a place for another person in my workout is if I decided that day I'm going for a single rep max, which is once in a fucking blue moon ever for me. So that's the only time. Otherwise, what ends up happening is I, I vibe off of their energy and I end up going doing what I did the other day. Which yeah, you are easy to influence. Hurt, hurt myself. <laughs> or what ends up happening is I, I allow, which this is what it would annoy me with working out with other professionals and other trainers is, you know, each guy or girl has their thing they want to do. Like, oh, I want to do this. Well, I want to do that. Oh, no, Listen, somebody has to be the leader. It's like, yeah. no. Like, Someone has to be like, the leader. Like, I know sure. what I want to do because I want to do something. Well, then you have to do everybody else's workout for them. Right. And you know, at that point, so which to, is a pain in the ass. Like, yesterday and today is a perfect example of this. Like, I called an audible on myself last night. Like, last night was going to the gym to do back buys and tries. And so I and I, I get there, I'm walking on the treadmill, working, doing my knee, kind of thinking about my workout before I go do it. And I'm like, you know, do I want to focus more on these types of movements or do I want to do this today? You know, you know what, maybe tomorrow, because I was going to take a day off tomorrow, maybe I'll just do my arms tomorrow because that's a really easy thing for me intensity wise to throw in there. And maybe I'll just address my back today and take some time on that and work on some mobile. And so I call an audible for what I know I should do for my body at that exact fucking moment. As soon as there's another person next to me, and this is including Katrina, I love her, okay, and I know she enjoys working out together, but I does like, she prefer to work out with you, or does yeah, she prefer to work out? Yeah, of alone? course she does. Yeah. But but you know why? Because it's what I said at the very beginning. Is because I'm a professional. I've been doing this for a very long time, so she likes it because I can I can help her with her mechanics. Like yep. she loves that she can do something, and I can give her the most subtle cues. She can apply it, and she goes, "Oh my god, I feel that so much more." So I get why she wants me to be in the workout. But for me, I, I'm not getting that same benefit. She's not giving like she's not giving me cues to help me get more out of my workout. Yeah, I so can, I kind of have to agree with Adam on this one. I'm a fucking Han Solo. Yeah, bro. Just, just only because of the the like you said the level. We're, that we're not. We're, we're at. not. Yeah, that's what I say. We're not. This, we're not the average person at all. No, no, and I, and I do really enjoy being in the gym and working out with Courtney. Same thing happens. I mean, I I, I want to help her with her form. I want to see her do well, but then it completely takes away from what. I'm trying to accomplish. And so I use that more as like hangout time. And so I don't really count it all, all the time as like a workout. I know she'll be pissed if she heard that, but like <laughs> for me, it's like literally like a trigger session or like a, you know, low to moderate mm -hmm. like intensity the whole time, which is fine. It's great. It's something I can add into the mix, but I need when I'm working out, working out, like I know exactly I'll make a call on the flag. I'll figure out like what I really need to be doing mm. and then what's going to complement that the best. And I just want to think about all that in my head for like just a matter of like seconds. Right. And right. I'm, before you and I'm that go and, and I that, don't have to like, that is impossible it. to do with a second. Part. And the reason why even was what I even, I, yeah, I think is bad for someone who's young, who's getting a, a workout partner is because then you're more likely to make the bad decisions because you have another person that you're, you're influenced. Yeah. You're influenced by. So, mm. I am not a fan of workout partners, and I know there's a ton of people right now that like that for the motivation and the accountability. If that works for you, then that's cool. So like, funny. I, I can. I, I wonder if any of us could like be trained for a month by somebody else. Um, it would have. Can to you be, imagine? I. You know what? I could, and it, but it would have to be someone that I would do things that I wouldn't normally do on my own, like. You know, working out with like a correctional exercise wizard. would be like learning a new skill. But yeah, what I'm like saying, a new in, skill. what I'm saying is like program design, a program yeah. that's very similar mm -hmm. to what you would do. Probably not. Yeah, I, don't, right? I don't see. Like it. I've already thought about having you like teach me cleans. Like it's just yeah. nothing. I've never had somebody by my side. Like I would totally do that. Like a skill yeah. that I'm fully aware you are superior in that movement than I am. And that I would love your eye to tell me, you know, mm -hmm. as I'm going through the mechanics. Uh -huh. So I could see working on skill based movements, having someone like yourself or another another professional. Yeah, but not the staples. We've been doing it for yeah, so long. Yeah, but I don't. Long, no right? one's no one's going to tell yeah. me when I go to the I don't gym. See it. No, the two the two workout partners I've ever had that I actually enjoyed working out with were both trainers, and they were both people that were in the industry. But they also followed my workouts. I've never worked out with anybody successfully 
who is experienced but also then wants to lead the work. It just doesn't work because everybody's going to be a little so different. So when you think about that, the, and, and then reality is somebody is always suffering. Uh, you... Hundred percent. I, I you, don't. You working. You, I don't think so. I don't think so. You leading the workout means that mean, that would, and knowing that here's, you have a, here's, a, a here's a deal. A little here's bit. a deal. Of course, somebody now, somebody is a give is give and take. Not true. Look, one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time was Arnold Schwarzenegger, and he worked out half the time up to a contest always with workout partners. Now he usually led the workout, but he worked out with Franco Colombo all the time. It's how he won many of his Olympias. He worked out with Ed Corney. It's and probably why he always won and everybody else took second and third. Because <laughs> he was, you're just proving my point. Because he's running his routine. They're all fucking following along. Like, I'll do whatever you're doing, I, Arnold. I think they, I, I, look, you cannot say that Ed Corney and Franco Colombo were subpar bodybuilders. Franco I Colombo didn't say won that. I said that's probably why they all got second and I, third. Is I, what I, said. I think that they worked out with him because they got a lot of benefit as well. And they did it for years. And you're going to get, sometimes you're going to get that dual benefit. But here's the deal. Most people aren't like us. They, they just aren't. They don't have yeah. our experience. Most people benefit from working out with a, with a partner. In fact, if you look at surveys and whatever, people find a good right. workout partner. They're more consistent. They have better workouts. They're safer. Right. They well, just I think, do better. So that's I think it, it points to the fact that the, the biggest monster to get people to work out, it's, it's, it's motivation. So you're self-motivated. Like if we're all very self-motivated, not a lot of people are very self-motivated. And so like to have accountability, you know, from an external source, whether it's your friend, that's your workout partner mm -hmm. or the environment, like, you know, a group setting or like, you know, you come into a gym, everybody knows you. Like for me, back when I was younger, like it, it was very good for me to have like all the athletes in one gym working out at the same time. Like that really benefited that's, me. That's that's a great point because I think when I'm talking about working out with a work, not workout partner, the two that I worked out with that I really enjoyed, that's kind of what we did. Many times they would they would do my exercises, but then sometimes they'd be like, I want to do this, and they would. Mm -hmm. And they'd be working out at the same time, kind of the same way that the three of us have worked out together because we've worked out together. Yeah, now that works. Before. That's if we're all in the same I don't location. Count, I, don't disperse, count, I don't count. I don't count that. Not, as, I don't yeah. count that as working out with you. Yeah, yeah. If I'm across the other side of the true. gym, then you're no different than anybody else in the side of the gym. Well, you mean we we carpooled together? <laughs> no, I this, see this, you over there. I say yeah, hi. Yeah. No, listen. When we worked out together, we will do. If I do ten exercises that day, you, me, you, and Justin end up doing two or three of them together. Oh, maybe that's okay. that's what I mean. Which, but that's no different than somebody at the gym using the same piece of equipment. No, you, it's you're very, not following the same routine. Uh, it's 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 different. It's definitely different, and I think it's a different level. I know you want to make the case for this, but here's the deal: it's it's inferior, bro. It's inferior for you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. I mean, you could like because if somebody because I'm I guarantee if somebody, you there's people listening right now that then, are like, no man, me and my workout partner, no, oh, are uh, great together. No, oh, I I bet I'm. I think I'm the minority. Right. I do believe that. Right. But right. I also I think that it's the ultimate place you want to get. I'm sorry, but if if when Katrina and I work out right, and if I'm being selfish, she's gonna follow my workout. Now, if I and if I want to give her the best workout, it's gonna look different than the one I'm gonna do for myself. Bottom line, she has a different body, she has different weaknesses, she has different strengths, she has a different place that she's at. Her body recovers differently. Right, she's right. stronger. She's, you know, what I'm saying there's all these things about her that make her different. Oh, yeah, that yeah, if I, I, I if I was coaching, yeah, her, I'm not gonna disagree with you. I think what you're saying somebody is, suffers. Yeah, I think what you're saying is the ideal place to be is in a in a place where you're so self motivated and secure. And consistent that you don't need anybody. You, you're yeah. there. You're doing your own work. Of course. Well, you've just built up so much knowledge about yeah. your your own body and like the the sign signals, yeah. like what your body really needs uh, as a result. But that just comes with experience and time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it motivates you to get to the gym, I think that's obviously if that's the difference maker, like having somebody to hold you accountable, that makes sense to me. Like why you do that? Like of course. Like mm -hmm. I would never tell a kid who's 22 years old, who's just kind of getting into weights, who has a workout partner, and they use each other to motivate each other to go to the gym and hold each other accountable, stop working out with your partner because you're not maximizing your workouts. Yeah. Well, that, that would be bad advice yeah. for me because the kid may not go to the gym now because yeah. he doesn't have his workout partner. Yeah. Well, like, well, picking a workout partner is like picking a business partner or picking a, a, a fucking mate. It, like You have to mesh on a lot of different levels. Let's be honest. Yeah. That is not an easy combination yeah. because here's the thing for me, and I've done this several times, and this is why I haven't worked out with partners for very long periods of time, is because the second you show up two seconds late to a workout or the second you act 
your energy is different than mine or you act like you're tired or you don't want to push it or you don't want to whatever, like that's cool. I'm not working out with you anymore. There's no, no hard feelings. And that's why you have to find, if you find a good workout partner, which is hard to find, it can be definitely worth its weight in gold, but it's not an easy thing to do, I would say. Next question is from That Fly Guy. Yeah. Hey, buddy. How do I grow a massive butt? <laughs> I'm <laughs> talking a about a booty so thick you can bounce a quarter off it. Muscular, of course, though. Yeah, this is Justin's question. <laughs> wow, <laughs> did I share, did I share with you guys the, the is, it, is there like a booty trend for guys now? Is that like a thing or? Well, I think men are becoming more comfortable with talking about it, right? Yeah. Let's be honest, no guy wants a fucking flat ass. They I don't want the dad pants. Where as it's a just- kid. As a kid, I had like this, dude. I had fucking, you know, frog ass. You know, you ever seen like <laughs> a, what a frog with suspenders would look like? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Imagine, <laughs> imagine that, right? You can, you, Hello, I know you can visualize Hello, that Hello, right my now. honey. Hello, right. my ragdoll. You have the yeah. V butt. Wow. Yeah, like, just, like, like a v. just droopy drawers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I had to wear a belt or my fucking pants fell off because I had no <laughs> ass to keep them up there, right? So I was that kid growing up, man. And... So yeah, I, I it secretly I didn't go around telling my home, my boys, you know, like, hey man, I wish I could grow a butt, dude. Uh, like, yeah, but deep down, it's my butt like, gains. Yeah, deep down, and I, I'm sure every every female Check listening right now will, would say that they love a guy that it's got an ass. They, actually, when they do when they do studies, that's one of the areas that women tend to look at as a man's yeah. hips and his and his glutes. Glutes. Here's why butts are. That's where your power source. Right. Yeah, there. I was just gonna say this. Here's why we are all attracted to fit muscular butts on men and on women. That is your prime moving muscle. That's like the that first off, if when you look at primates, humans have the biggest glute muscles of all primates. Most primates have these tiny little glute muscles and that's because they walk on all on all mm-hmm. fours or they climb so for that uh, ugly ass trees. baboon ass. Yeah, that's that not thing? glutes, that's just a big <laughs> pink weirdness. Yeah, it's just ugly. That's gross. But the reason why we have such big glutes is cuz we stand upright. And it is what balances us and it's what propels us. And if you have any type of health or athleticism, you're probably going to have a very fit, muscular looking butt. So this is why men and women are both attracted to this. Now, how do you grow a massive butt? This is kind of a, it's simple, but not easy, right? It's simple in the sense that there's a few exercises. If you get good at, the odds are you're going to add some muscle and size to your butt. Barbell squats, Mm -hmm. deadlifts. Uh, maybe hip thrusts, and I mean those are lunges, uh, you know, explosive jumps. Yeah, like those are kind of like the big, you know, uh, I guess cornerstone movements. And if you get good at those and you get strong at those, you're probably going to develop some serious uh, glute muscles. Now there are occasions where people will do those, and they're still not getting results on their butt. And it's not because those exercises aren't effective; it's because they're not connecting to their glutes very, very well, in which case learning how to prime your glutes before those lifts makes a massive, massive, tremendous difference. Absolute massive difference. You need connectivity there. I mean, and and then too, it's it's a practice thing. So like I've, I've noticed even just like, and I'm not like, trying actively to grow my glutes but just you know obviously going through i hope uh, not (laughs) squats but but when i'm resting or i'm like just kind of hanging out i tend to just drop into a squat and i'm i'm very very comfortable just sitting like that for you know give me like a half an hour i could sit like that Mm. and it's just it's a matter of like my body responds like almost immediately to like oh this is this is a comfortable position i'm very like well versed in this and just to be able to kind of put that in 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 low intensity low volume but like have it constantly there um and and work on you know like the loading and like getting all the different stimulus by going through the different phases of how to train uh, the glutes but yeah first off first and foremost you have to connect to it yeah you know i just had a thought on this you think i wonder if doug can find this too i wonder if there's a study out there to show as uh in a, as a general population, are we losing our asses? <laughs> I don't know if there's like, a study. Well, think about it. Like we we sit more more now today than we ever have in our in entire history, existence yeah. ever yeah. ever yeah. right. And it's that what that does is promote this dominant hip flexor and quad like takeover for whenever you are getting up and down because you're in that position right. Mm. So I wonder if. We are evolving to have less of butts as humans, and or that do we be- look like we have butts just because of lumbar lordosis, interior <laughs> pelvic tilt, yeah. yeah. right? Okay, oh, it could be yeah. that too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women wear high heels a lot now. That's what do- you know. And by the way, that's why high heels are attractive. It's because 
standing in heels automatically puts your back in an arch and shows off your butt. It's actually sexual signaling. Mm. Um, but, you know, the hardest people, here's the hardest people, by the way, when I would get clients who did lots of long distance running, those were the toughest people to develop their butts because when you do this repetitive long distance, not sprinting, I'm not talking about sprinting because that's totally different, but people who do lots of long distance running, their legs move in this short end range of motion constantly. And so what you end up with is if they have any muscles that are developed at all, it's calves and quads. Hamstrings are underdeveloped and there are no glutes. And with those people, when you get them under a bar and you teach them how to squat, I mean, I can watch their butt just, it's off the whole time. And it looks, their knees come forward. If they have good ankle flexion, then it just looks like this strange upright type of squat with no glute activation. These people, I'll train them for weeks without ever doing a squat. It's like all hip thrust. It's all abduction. It's all single leg toe touch. Like we got to turn on your butt, get it to fire. Once they start to feel it, then we move on to box squats and we'll do that so they can learn how to sit back. And then eventually we get into barbell squats. But if I took those people and just threw them in a barbell squat, even if they had good mobility and they could go all the way down, all the way up, what they would experience is bigger quads. Yeah. They would just end up developing more quads. It's going to take all of the force. Yeah. Well, so we have ahead. a we have a really I mean one of our most viral YouTube videos is how to how to make the butt grow. So mm-hmm. that's a really good YouTube video. And then we also have a free butt guide at mindpumpfree.com. So if you I mean, I mean th- where we that's where I cover some yeah, of the stuff. Set. In the, yeah. yeah. We also have a butt builder bundle. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So here's so, here's some things you could do when you're about to start your workout to prime your glutes to fire. You could do some hip abduction. So an easy one would be lay on your side, put a band around both legs, lift your leg out to the side, but keep your foot pointed straight and try to fire the outside of your glutes. So you could do some of those. You could do some single leg or both leg hip thrusts where you, we did a good video. Actually, Adam did a great video on this a a while ago where you put yourself in in a particular type of pelvic tilt shoot your hips up, squeeze the glutes at the top, get them to fire. That's in that video. That's in that video. You can also do single leg toe touches with good form, try and squeeze the glutes at the top. Just get to the point where, oh, okay, I can feel my butt firing. I can feel the muscle burn a little bit. Then get into your lunges and your barbell squats and all that stuff and try to put yourself in a position where you can still feel those glutes firing and, and then watch what happens. And don't go too heavy. Because as soon as you start to add lots of weight, your glutes are going to turn off and the other muscles that are stronger on you because your glutes never fire are going to take over and you'll lose the effectiveness uh, of that exercise. Next question is from Tom Siebert. Both of my siblings are severely overweight and starting their fat to fit journeys for the hundredth time. My brother just bought MAPS Red and plans on using it until his gastric bypass surgery. He has yet to make a final decision about having the surgery. Would you suggest the surgery to a loved one in any circumstance? In Here, some, yeah, in life or death. Yeah, exactly. 100%. That's, yeah. The, that's when I would say do it is when you're so, your health is so poor that they're like, okay, you need to, this is an emergency situation. Yeah, yeah you're, they're like, you're, you've got five to 10 years to live maybe because of how obese yeah, you Yeah, you need to lose weight and, you know, this is going to be, because here's the deal. Gastric bypass is not a fucking easy procedure. I think a lot of people get confused and think, oh, it's a cool, easy solution or an easier solution to my weight, you know, problem or whatever my food problem. Yeah. It's there it's a major surgery. They are going into your stomach or your gut. They're cutting you open. So it's a major surgery. They cut through muscle, all that stuff. Yeah, they put you out. And if you're and, and the people who get this, by the way, are very overweight. So they're also cutting through layers of adipose tissue. Have you ever watched a surgery being done? Yes. There's like layers of oh, yeah. yellow adipose tissue but to get to. Like cut through it like they cauterize their way through it, right? With like yeah, a laser. They so go terrible all, timing to put oh, that bacon in my mouth. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> so they go through around. all of it. Then what they got to do is they basically bypass your stomach and what you're left with is a small pouch of a stomach. Your stomach plays a vital role in your ability to digest food and assimilate and absorb nutrients and you are permanently altering that to the point where most gastric bypass uh, patients have to take supplements and have gut issues for the rest of their life afterwards. 
to the point where you're you're not going to be able to eat a few hundred calories, more than a few hundred calories at a time, sometimes a hundred calories at a time, yeah. without vomiting or getting diarrhea. <laughs> you're not absorbing fat soluble nutrients like you normally would. So you have to mega dose on them. And here's the deal: being low in nutrients, you can feel depressed, you can feel like shit. So this isn't like an easy procedure. It's not an easy answer. No, yeah. it's it makes sense in a life or death situation. Yeah. It makes sense if it's like, hey, like you you've gone so far that everything's going to shut down on you if we don't get this weight off and we don't do it fast and soon. And so then I, then I could see that. But if you're somebody who's, you know, 100, maybe even 200 pounds overweight and you've just and you're young still and you have the ability to p- potentially make some good choices, get into strength training and My take- cousin did. My cousin lost over 120 pounds. Did yeah. no be- no gastric bypass and he just slowly changed his 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 life uh, his lifestyle and his behaviors and he's now in such an amazing place and here's the other thing this is a big problem that nobody talks about okay when you go and you talk to the doctor about this procedure they will refer you to counseling which i think is smart so you do counseling along with it but what they're not going to tell you is whatever it is that is causing you to do this to yourself okay because this is not a genetic thing, okay? Yes, genes affect how much weight we gain and lose, and there are definitely hormone issues, but I'm sure they've ruled all that out. Um, there isn't a genetic thing that, that makes you 100 pounds overweight, okay? Just isn't. That is a, you are using food like a drug. Right. And whatever- Some form of coping mechanism. Yeah, and, and whatever is motivating you to do this to yourself, because you are fully conscious that you are killing yourself. You are- not maybe not fully conscious, but partially conscious that this is a problem. I am hurting myself. Um, if you don't solve the root be- behind why you're doing this to yourself, and all you do is take away the drug, you are going to replace that drug with something else. Y- you are actually going to be in a shitty situation. So if you look at the rate of addiction with alcohol, drugs, sex, gambling, the rate of divorce, and whatever, with people who get a gastric bypass, extremely high, it goes up. Mm-hmm. Because you've, it's like taking an alcoholic, locking them in a, in a cage, and saying, there, now you're not drinking alcohol anymore. And it's like, they're going to do something else to themselves. It's going to be a very difficult situation. Because well, you're not addressing the root cause. You're not addressing you're not the addressing, root cause. I mean, something something has led that person to be addicted to food the way they are. It's just bottom line. I mean, I've seen this with many friends of mine that have battled you know, pills or, or hard drugs or, or sex or any of those things where they've been addicted to something and they do, they just trade it for one. They trade one for the other. It's just, okay, that's, you fix the alcohol thing. That's cool. But now you're like this obsessive gambler. where did that come from? You know, yeah. or, oh, you fixed the gambling, but now all of a sudden you're pill popping and doing this now. It's like, it's, they have that behavior and that behavior is an escape from something else that they're running from. And until they address the, the root cause that's causing them to do that, they're just trading one thing for the so other. So they pair them up with like a counselor beforehand, right? To yeah. To sort of discuss. But, but it's like, short. Yeah, I was going to say like, wouldn't you, I mean, prefer to have them like really like dive deep with, with, with a therapist, somebody to really get down to like, you know, what the emotional triggers are and like where this is all kind of coming so, from. So I think they go there. Yeah, I've yeah. worked with, I've worked with lots of gastric bypass um, patients, people both who've had it and people who think, who thought about having it and came to me first. And the most success I ever saw with these with people in this situation did two things. There were two big things that they did. They hired themselves a very good therapist so they would see this person on a weekly basis, and they also hired a good personal trainer with experience in this situation. And I say good trainer because you go hire the wrong trainer – they're going to beat the crap out right, of you. Just and run yeah, you. It's going to be a big, boot camp bullshit. Yeah, yeah, you are not a biggest loser. No, go find a trainer who has lots of experience, who's empathetic, who's patient, and who understands you know what you're going through. Work with them, work with the therapist, and then give yourself some time. Now, some people say, oh, that's expensive. It's actually cheaper. It's cheaper than the cost of the, the, the surgery. It's cheaper than the time you'll take off of work. And it's cheaper than all of the turmoil that you'll go through because you're not dealing with the root issues. Now, it may take you a couple years, may take you three years to deal with this and lose the weight with a therapist and a personal trainer. But I promise you the odds of it staying off and how happy you'll be at the end of this without having to go through this major procedure and change your digestive system is so much better. It's such a better option and you will solve root causes or at least you'll start to attempt 
to solve these root causes and you'll start to look at them and you'll have the help from the therapist. And it's so much more. I've, I've done this with several people and I still am in contact with some of them. And years later, very successful with their weight loss. Yeah. I've also worked with people who've had gastric bypass who've gained the weight back. Yeah. It's not a guarantee, by the yeah, way. Your stomach will stretch right back out. You, you need to rebuild your body. You're, you're not going to be able to rebuild your body without like applying the right amount of time. Mm -hmm. So if you just want to get right to the end, you know, you didn't learn anything. No, no. Here's what I would do. I would tell somebody in this situation, because if you look at all the money that's going to, you look at the procedure, you look at the time lost at work and, you know, the, the turmoil and all that stuff. You know, I think you could you could safely invest five to ten thousand dollars for a year of good training and good therapy. Okay, people spend more than that on on plastic surgery all the time. A breast augmentation procedure is more than that, right? Five to ten grand. Take that money aside. If you need to get a loan to do it, it's probably going to be worth it for something like this. Your health. Find yourself the therapist. Find yourself the trainer. Make sure they communicate with each other. Because that's what I would always do. I'd always talk to the therapist and we'd talk about like what's going on and here's what I'm doing with my training. And, oh, you know, Carol didn't show up for a workout. Is everything okay? And we go back and forth. It was such an effective strategy uh, that I found that uh, – and, and, and these people, just like I said, years later are different, fundamentally happy. And one of them became a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. of them actually became a – do that. Take that money. Invest in that. Figure out the root – now, here's what it's going to take from you or from your siblings. This is because we're talking about your siblings. Here's what it's going to take. It's going to take courage on their part to face their demons. Because I think a lot of times when people get these surgeries, a lot of times they don't want to face their demons. And so they go get the surgery and they're like, mm -hmm. I just want to get rid of the symptoms of my demons. But I have news for you. Make sure you communicate this to your siblings. If they get gastric bypass surgery – and they're not, they don't want to face their demons, they will be forced to face their demons anyway. That's what's going to happen with the surgery because you're going to take away their drug. They're going to have to face their demons. And if they don't want to, their life is going to be, it's going to be very, well, very if they difficult. they want to, this is, that's exactly what leads these, why it's such a high rate for them to get addicted to something else. That's right. It's because, okay, well, you just took the, got rid of the symptom. I can't no longer get the food like I was because now my stomach's shrunk. But I'm still, I still haven't resolved this issue. Oh, so let me go into drinking, or let me go into gambling, or let me go into sex, or porn, or whatever the yep. fuck your next addiction yep, ends yep, up being. Yep. If you, if you, I remember we had this one lady that worked out at our gym who got this procedure, who was just. She I was, dealt with this a lot too. She and it was, it was crazy, dude. Yeah. She and this was an individual. We were right across the street. Well, Santa yeah. Teresa was right across the street oh, from, from Kaiser, Kaiser, and Kaiser had the first one, or that Kaiser from that clinic. I've had, yeah, a few, had yeah. one of the first ones. Yeah. So. Uh, so we had a lady that came in who ended up losing 100 pounds. But she was in the not doing it right, you know, category. And she would show up for her sessions. I'm not exaggerating. She would sit at the, at the front of the gym, parked in her car. And this was post gastric bypass. And she would force feed herself. And I could tell it was painful because she had gastric bypass. So she couldn't fit much food or something. She would force feed herself like two bacon, egg, and cheese biscuits or something from McDonald's. Then she'd come in. So she'd be 20, 30 minutes early to her workout. Then she would come in. She'd go in the bathroom and destroy it, like literally destroy it because her, her, her gut was fucked up, probably had her, you know, she had severe diarrhea, would kill the bathroom. We'd have to open the doors and it was just horrible in there. And I could see what she was doing to herself because she wasn't dealing with the root cause. And yes, she lost weight because she was forced to. Eventually, she started gaining it back because she continued that process of, wow. of doing that. So, And listen, I'm not saying this because... I'm making fun of anybody. I'm not saying this because I think anybody's stupid. I feel for anybody in this situation. I have tons of empathy. This is a demon. It is a, it is a very difficult, difficult thing to tackle. So you need to, uh, you need to acknowledge how difficult this is going to be in a true sense. Right. Acknowledge it and say to yourself, I am not going to do this alone. I'm going to hire some professionals, I'm going to give myself a year, I'm going to take this money, it's dedicated to that, and it's going to suck. It's going to be hard, but I'm going to grow through this, and I want to do this for myself because I care about myself. Go in with that attitude, and I promise you, give yourself a couple years and, and watch what happens. So check this out. You can find us on our own social media pages. That's right. I have mine. Adam has his. Justin has his. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. So my page is Mind Pump Sal. Just, Adam is Mind Pump Adam. Justin is Mind Pump Justin. Also, we have free guides like the butt guide 
that we referenced earlier in the episode. You can find all of our guides at mindpumpfree.com. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.